Okay, hello everyone. Um, today we are going to look into some programming aspects of uh, this engineering statistics. So as we know, uh, or as we discussed so far, we are talking about various distribution data generated from distributions and uh, and if you are given a data, we want to see that what is the underlying distribution that is generating this data and all. So to do this, we may need some tools to or mostly the software tools to uh, analyze this data. And for that, we are going to talk about Python today, which is uh, one of the languages uh, widely used uh, in statistics. Okay, so we are just talking about Python. There are other possibilities like one can use MATLAB, one can use R and uh, other languages. But uh, here uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Python. So to begin with, we'll talk about uh, how to get the things uh, running for us. So first I will talk about very briefly about how to install and how to set up our environment. And so Python is very easily accessible. It is open sourced. Uh, you can just go to the python.org websites and just uh, download the latest version. So here when we try to do this, uh, the version 3.10.6 was the latest version and uh, you can choose whatever the latest stable version available when you visit the site you can download that. And here we are talking about installation for Windows but uh, you can follow the instructions given on the Python web page to get it installed for uh, if you are using uh, either Linux machine or Mac OS machine. So once you do this you just follow the instruction and you let uh, check these options like you need to set uh, this to be set up in certain paths and uh, give access to other users use are like a standard check boxes you do this and go for uh, customized installation and then maybe the installer ask you to specify the location where you install it either choose a default one or if you want to put it as a separate location just specify your location and once you are done this is done so the, your python gets installed now with this, you have a Python, you may just launch your terminal and run your code there, whatever you code. Okay? But often we want uh, execution the code to be more interactive and maybe if we have something like a, an IDE kind of environment is there, then it is better. So for that, we will look for uh, what options we have. One of the op popular option is Anaconda and uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook. So Anaconda is basically a, a one of the open source Python distribution platform. So it supports maybe other languages also uh, not and not necessarily Python. It is a, like a very comprehensive tool. You can use it. And when you use Anaconda, it comes with many IDIs, I will come to that, but uh, just let us uh, quickly follow the steps here to get your Anaconda installed and here you can just go to the website of Anaconda, click the download and just follow the steps get to, to get your uh, Anaconda installed. Uh, again, it will the installer will ask you to give you the path and it will uh, you have to check certain options choose the options as necessary for your machine and check uh, uh, you need to also be careful whether your machine is a 64 bit has a 64 bit processor or 32 bit processors accordingly you select and then you are ready. As I said Anaconda is like a platform it comes with uh, various IDE tools like uh, Eclipse, Ninja and uh, I don't know maybe there are uh, several others. But one of the popular IDEs in it for uh, running uh, Python code is uh, Jupyter Notebooks and uh, that is what we will be using, uh, that is what we will be discussing uh, in, uh, in this uh, tutorial session. 
So now once you have the Anaconda successfully installed, what you need to do is you need to open your terminal. Okay, let me see my terminal is over or maybe I will just come out of this presentation mode. Okay, now I will open my terminal here and in that I will just simply type Jupyter Notebook. And this will open Jupyter Notebook and here Jupyter is an uh, web based uh, IDE. So when you write this Jupyter Notebook, it will directly open inside the web browser. Now here in whichever directories you want to write the code or you have already written the code, go to that directory. So here the codes that I have put are in this Python 001 folder, I am just going there. Okay, and now I have a notebook already created, Python 1. When you click, it will open this where I have already written some content which I am going to discuss. And if you want a new Python, sorry, new uh, notebook, you can just go here and open a, a new book here and do all your uh, code executions here. Okay, so let me go back to the ones. Uh, I have already created. So the first thing in any programming language is just to understand how to create variables and strings and uh, Python gives a very easy and intuitive ways of creating this uh, variables and strings. Okay? So let us say if I want to create a variable x for which I have to assign a value to I have to just write x equals to true. And if I have to create a string uh, of word hello world, I have to put it under this uh, inverted commas and assign it to a variable which I would denote it as string 1 here. So let us see how does this uh, work. Now I am going to run this. When to run either you can click here or you can use some shortcuts like I am using a, a Macbook here, there my keyboard shortcut is to shift and enter then it will run and let us see uh, okay if I want to insert another cell here I have to just click on this plus symbol here and uh, write a whatever the code I want to. So let us say I want to see what is that x I have assigned and now I am going to simply execute by pressing shift and return so it shows me the value that is assigned to the variable. And now if I want to see what is that is assigned to string 1, again I write string 1 here and write enter and you will see I see that the string 1 has this string hello world. And also Python gives us very easy way to accept inputs. Suppose like uh, um, I want to instead of assigning value x directly here, I want user to give a value here. So I can for that I can use users through this function input. Okay, let me execute this uh, and let us see what happens. So now see uh, when it is asking me to enter a number, let me enter number 10 and then for, uh, for the next step it is asking me to enter a string, let us say engineering statistics. Okay, and now I, I can press enter, now these two outputs are shown. Notice that now I have another return, I have basically converted this number x to a float and store it under num x. So basically if I want to store this um, numbers in a particular type, then I will just use the type and then store them. And here also like uh, uh, because like users you have just have taken input, user even though I asked to enter a number if uh, let us say user has entered some characters or uh, maybe he just entered a number I want to still store it under float so I use it and suppose when I asked him to enter a string so numbers are also some kind of string so if user has entered a number as string uh, instead of interpreting them as numbers I want to in in interpret that string that is what I use this function string and then store. Um, 
in this variable str1. Okay. So now let us see um, what I will get if I print this numx and string 1. So notice that since I have stored it as float, it is taken stored the value I enter 10 as 10.0 10 and a string since I entered a proper string it has just stored it as a string. Okay. And now you can go back if you are just have a variable and you want to check what is its type, you can use the function type here to get what kind of variable it is and for string you will see that string 1, you will see that it is simply string 1. And here I can convert this number to string, uh, see that I use this uh, function string on this number x, now it is showing me under this uh, inverted commas. That means when it is coming as inverted commas, this is clear that even though 10 is an integer, but now it is uh, treated as a string here. Okay. And now we can do this conversions between various types. Suppose if I have a uh, number which is like a float or which has been given to 5.5, but I wanted to convert to integer, I will just apply this function integer and then when I see what it is, you will see that it is just shown as 5. Okay. And to when we have to uh, assign some uh, variables, we have to be careful and names to the variables, we have to be careful. We, it is not that uh, anything we can take as a variable name. For example, uh, uh, this I want to define a variable called this uh, tendril curve, but here 10 I have replaced by the integer 10. And, uh, and I want to store in that variable value 56, if I do that it gives me error because I, this is not permitted. I cannot use uh, numbers and uh, characters in defining a variable. Similarly, if I want to save this uh, name Kuli under the variable class, this is uh, not accepted and uh, Python will show me error because this class is a kind of a reserved variable. Okay? So, we have to keep these things in mind like uh, uh, like uh, I uh, like I, I cannot mix up uh, numbers and characters in defining a variable and similarly I cannot use uh, some reserved uh, names for variables. Python allows us to do various operations and, uh, and uh, the good thing is like we can do additions and all in a very intuitive way without the syntax is so simple that we while writing this code it is as if we are writing something on a paper. Like uh, if we want to do this uh, uh, add two numbers a and b it is simply we have to write it as a plus b and if you have to subtract two numbers we have to simply write a minus b and if you have to multiply two numbers a and b it is simply a star b and if it is a division it is going to be written as a with backslash b and it is a division or with the floor that let where we ignore the fractional part then it is a 2 backslash divided b and if you are only interested in the modulus then it is a percentage b and if you want to exponent a to b we have to use a this double stars b and if you have to negate the number it is simply minus a. So, here are some examples. Uh, Let us say I have this uh, two values which I have stored in A and B here. A is 34 and B is 3. Like uh, you see that like I can simply the, uh, do the addition by doing this and I can print the value. So, this is as simple as that. So, notice that when I did A by B here, that is the true division, I got 11.33. 333 like that, but when I do a backslash backslash b that is the I did a floor division I only get it as 11 the integer part was ignored. Okay, I hope these things are clear and uh, also Python makes handling of the strings also pretty easy and very intuitive. Uh, suppose I have two strings let us say one is uh, two words hello 
and another one is word and I want to do concatenation of them. It is like as if I am adding these two words or strings. So, I can simply say a equals to c a plus b and when I print it you will just see that hello word. See, but when you did a plus b it just concatenated them back to back. But if you want to add some space between the two words, one option for that is like uh, you add space by using this plus symbols here. So, what it first did is like uh, when I use this when I use this plus here it is adding space to a and after that it is adding b to that string. So, that is what you will get a word uh, which looks like this hello with a space and word. Okay, multiplication is also pretty straightforward uh, even if you want to use it on uh, strings. Suppose I have a string ABC, then if I want to appear the strings 3 times all I need to do is take this A into 3 and uh, if you want to add a space and then do multi and add multiply and uh, repeat them 3 times I have to add space this part will adding space and then repeat it 3 times. So, this is how the output looks. Okay, so, these are like a basic um, how to create uh, variables and uh, how to do some basic operations on numbers as well as strings. Now, if you want to do now if you want to do coding maybe we have to do lot of uh, repeated task over uh, numbers for that we need to some, some, some check certain condition or do some looping operations. So, let us look into the uh, conditions how to check and uh, some looping operations. First let us look into the if else uh, conditions how it will work in python suppose if you have a number n has set a number and if I want to check whether this n is greater than 2 all I need to do is write it like this check whether n is greater than 2 and notice that after that I have this uh, uh, colon here and then I am going to check and write this like print the statement is correct and after that I do not need to write anything here. So, the one important thing is after I write n is greater than 2 complete that with this colon and then print the statement, but uh, you have to properly index it align it. Okay? And uh, for example, if you after writing this you do this python will automatically take where you should be writing the next condition here. Okay, now, let us write this now here since we have already put uh, 18 in n this is true and that is why the statement is come and got to be correct. And uh, similarly um, uh, if you want to check whether n is less than 2 I will do the same thing, but now if you execute it say I am executing by compressing control uh, sorry shift return, but nothing is executed because the condition is failing. And now if you want to check we want to now check both like which which of them is uh, correct whether uh, uh, like uh, the condition n is less than 2 holds or not we can first check with n equals to less than 2 put a colon there then print a statement the statement is correct if that is true else. So, when I say else it is always going to be taken as a complement of this condition whatever the condition you have written for the if statement and again you have to ended by a colon and then print the statement is false. Okay. Now, this could be expanded it is not that else cannot take any condition here else could also take a condition, uh, but in that case we have to write it as else if. So, this is uh, same thing we do in other language like C, C++. So, if you want to check whether two numbers x and y let us say you want to check the condition x less than equals to y you check it 
and if that is true you want a statement like x is less than y and if uh, x is uh, greater than y that also you want to be stated and if none of these two holds then the only possibility is that both are equal and uh, that you are going to write uh, in the last case. Now we can also do so let me execute this now it is clear that since x is having value y phi and y is valuing value, value 6 phi is less than 6 here is the correct value and now we can do the nesting of this under else conditions also we can put further if else for example if I want to check whether two numbers how they are first I can check whether they are equal if they are equal I am going to print x is equals to y else there are two possibilities either x can be greater than y so I write this and write the want to print it x greater than y else if x is not greater than y obviously it has to be less than y I am going to stay print like this. So notice that the major the things is like this has to be properly this lines has to be properly indented you do not need to write like a end every time like uh, we do uh, in uh, you know, C or C++ language here this end is automatically inferred by looking into the indentation ok ok now loops ok so we will stop here and uh, we will continue discussion of loops in the next module.